Excerpts from my translation of The Japanese Linguistic Landscape, Reflections on Quintessential Words, by Naganishi Susuma, published in 2019 by the Japan Library. As always, I will be reading two entries from the book. Um, this time I'll be reading Kazahana, which means light flurries, and Isaribi, Isaribi which means fish luring fires at night. Okay, so we'll start with the first one, Kazahana, light flurries. Kazahana is written with two Chinese characters, Kaze, wind, and Hana, flower. In fact, the word means something like light snowfall, Koyuki. Kazahana was one of the first words that I acquired unnaturally, that is, outside the course of everyday experience. I learned the word at a very young age from my late father, an amateur haiku poet. He often taught me various haiku poems, and one of them was Kazahana. Even now I distinctly remember being deeply moved by the word's beautiful resonance. By deeply moved, I mean the distinct sensation of having the word radiate before me in a kind of sublime light. When I was much older, I came to realize that the word Kazahana actually made frequent appearances in everyday conversations. Sometime in the early winter I noticed something fluttering in midair, tiny white flakes that resembled snow but were not quite full-fledged snow. When someone says, oh look, it's snowing, people often respond, you're right, Kazahana. That exchange, a rather common conversation, is a kind of mutual verification that winter has just begun. The Kaza of Kazahana refers to the cold winds, or Samukaze, that herald, that herald the arrival of winter. Hana means nose when written with the Chinese character Hana, nose, and by extension, vanguard or harbinger. Is Kazahana the harbinger of cold winter winds then? Hana can also mean flower when written with the Chinese character Hana. Are the flurries flower petals carried by the wind? Does the wind itself transform into a flurry of flowers, soon to fall and scatter on the ground? The image is a rather beautiful one, I must say. Examples of snow being likened to flowers are found throughout Japanese classical literature, even as far back as the 8th century. In Book 5 of the Manyoshu, we find the following waka. Waga sono ni ume no hanachiru, hisakata no ame yori yuki no nagare kuru kamo. In my garden, the plum blossoms fall. Or is it snow f flowing from the distant heavens? By Otomo no Tabito. The poem movingly depicts the follow falling and scattering of plum blossoms as the following s as the flowing snow. Even by the high standards of the Manyoshu, which abounds with outstanding poems, the work is a waka masterpiece. To be sure, the conceits of likening snow to flowers in the wind and likening flowers in the wind to snow are not the same. In both cases, however, the joining of the two images, snow descending through the sky and blossoms scattering on the ground, through the figurative medium of the wind, is a splendid notion. While we're on the subject, allow me to mention one additional phrase, kikushiri no hana. It refers to the flower, hana, that blooms after autumn's last blooming flower, the chrysanthemum, kiku. This flower appears just, just when you think the flower blossoming season is over, and then voila, one more appears, snow. Here too the metaphor for compares snow to a flower, and what a beautiful one it is. And the next wor word is isaribi, fish luring fires at night. On the ocean surface at night, the fishing lamps flicker, dotting the scene here and there in a moving pattern. For many Japanese, the sight brings back memories with deep nostalgia. These flickering lamps on fishing boats are called isaribi. The word is written with the Chinese characters isadi, meaning to fish, and hi, fire or light. The fishing lamps often feature prominently in aerial photographs of the Japanese nightscape. You could even say the boat lights are an emblem of the country. This verb, isada, the verb form of isadi, meaning to fish, happens to be the same word et etymologically as asadu, which means to forage, 
to forage. You may be disappointed to learn that Isaru and Asaru share the same origins, but that relationship highlights an ex excellent side of the Japanese language which draws a distinction between animals that forage, Asaru, for, source, for sources of few, food, and humans who fish, Isaru, for their prey. I remember feeling crestfallen after reading a poem by Kaneko Mizu, Misuzu called The Big Catch Taiyo which describes humans celebrating a great hall while the surviving fish are conducting funeral rites. The awareness that the enterprise of fishing invariably goes hand in hand with the death of countless fish comes through in the word isada, but the word isada, uh, the word asada, lacks that dimension. When it comes to isaribi, I immediately imagine a squid fishing boat in the night. A few years back, I stayed at the inexpensive traditional Japanese lodge in a town near the Sea of Japan. That night, the proprietress served me an onabe, hot pot dish. While I was helping myself to the food with chopsticks, she set into relating her life story to me. My husband was a fisherman on a squid boat, she began, but one night he fell into the water and drowned. After that, I managed to make ends meet by running this little lodge, all the while raising my son by myself. I didn't want my son to suffer the same fate, so I did what I could to get him through high school. I kept praying that he'd find a white-collar office job somewhere. But one day he came home and announced that he wanted to follow in his old man's footsteps. He wouldn't listen to me. Now he's left his home, he's left home to train to be a fisherman. Her feelings are natural, to be sure. But her son's sentiments make sense too. This confusing thing called life, Jinsei in Japanese, will no doubt go on spinning its patterns out of this mess force called life force. Mess called life force. Inochi in Japanese. One misthread at a time. Since that night, whenever I see an isaribi out in the ocean, I immediately recall the image of that, that sad woman's wrinkled hands. In a way, the fishing boat lights, blinking sadly in the sea, glinting here and there amid the lonely darkness of night, seem like the faint light emanating from us weak, fragile humans. We can no doubt tra trace the beauty of this word isaribi to that perception as well.